She speaks in a lilting accent, hinting toward her secret double life as a leprechaun slash salamander assassin. In addition to riding, looking for pots of gold at the end of rainbows, and searching for her mortal enemies, Sala and Mander, she makes Harlequin Daisy Jeans. minds of my generation destroyed by perfection, sweet-faced and kind-hearted liars and actors with blood-red hands, who cut themselves shaving in fear that the sharks would smell blood in the water, who loosened their jeans and their baseball caps and refused to grow up until they saw an up to grow to, who popped red pills in a high school bathroom until the insides of their heads were sharper than razor blades, who saw the city and the world and the sky and dismissed them as too expensive dreams, who chased an Abercrombie body through subways and highways and freeways and alleyways and found her too much, who avoided the gazes of the homeless on the street and the fear that they would be looking into mirrors, who looked for the shuddering high called pretty everywhere it shouldn't have been, who bought the revolution from Macy's for $12.99 and called it overpriced, who kissed girls drunk because they could not kiss them sober, who remembered what the New York skyline had looked like at the turn of the millennium and forgot again because it was not important, who found the American dream in a cigarette and flipped it into the trash can, who were shot down like dogs by open police and were too afraid to stand up and scream about it, who peered at their floors and mirrors across the country and called themselves incomplete, who consumed McDonald's like medication and lost themselves in the delusions and the hallucinations contained in the dollar menu, who set aside five minutes each morning to put their masks on, who prayed to gods and angels and standardized tests that even they no longer believed in, who plugged in their headphones and pulled up their hoods because the world was too loud to experience, who mouthed the word college like a pop song and pop songs like hymns of salvation, who reached for kindness and found naivete and still hesitated to choose it over cynicism, who wanted to drive from that country to Las Vegas dizzy on mescaline but were too poor to own cars, who felt snickers in their veins and better drugs and acid and neon corporate logos more hallucinatory than peyote, who contented themselves in the heroes and demigods plastered in people magazine like triptychs, who begged desperately for a medical diagnosis as an escape from the impossible weight of themselves, who laughed at offensive jokes as an alternative to dying, who said that saying I love you was a parenting technique and were never refuted, who sang jingles they'd heard on the television and knew them better than they knew their names, who waited almost impatiently for the inevitable arrival of the apocalypse, who made fun of America because it was a dream they were too sober to find anymore, who kept their heads down and their eyes down and their hopes down as low as they would go, who believed desperately and fanatically and painfully in the girl who had everything they had on her resume, plus one, who transformed all of the things they loved into a competition because they were never given another choice. <laughs> 